Richie Labamba Rosenberg. Did I say that right? That's right. It is. Welcome. Welcome to the studio, Hennessy Studios here. Appreciate that. Thank you. I see that you brought um, two things. You brought a son and an instrument with you, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> they come as a pair. They do. <laughs> What's your son's name? Evan. Evan. And how yeah. old is Evan? 32. Yeah, doing big things, I hear. We were just talking off offline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you've got a you've got more than one son. We have five kids. Five kids. Yeah. Okay. All from the same mommy. Yeah. And I hear everybody's uh uh big into music like their father. Yeah, they are. They <laughs> went right right down the line. Yeah. Kids <clears throat> are doing great and they're in college. Awesome. Well, I want to learn more about your family here, but I hear that there's another passion of yours and that you're a Marvel Comics fan. Yes. Is that right? That's right. <laughs> okay. Well, we're, we're going to get right into this. <laughs> we're going to play a little Marvel trivia game here. Ooh. You like that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to ask a couple questions. Some right. of them are multiple choice. Some are not. And, uh, and we're just going to see how well you do here. Okay. <laughs> First question. Who is the villain who killed Gwen Stacy, Spider-Man's first love? Mysterio? The Green Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> by the by the way, our producer, we always talk about this, Jenner, is like she could write questions for Jeopardy. She is so like tough. So <laughs> so don't feel bad. Okay. All right. The Hulk. He was originally supposed to be gray. Did you know that? Yeah. How did he eventually get his signature green color? This is a multiple choice answer here. Okay. okay. So Stan Lee's favorite color was green. That's A. His mentor told him to change the color green. Stanley spilled something on the comic and gave him the idea to make the Hulk green. Or D, there was a problem with the printer. <laughs> wow. Uh, Your guess would be as good wow. as my guess here. Uh, a? <laughs> His favorite color is green. You would think so. That would be the one I'd go for. It's actually D, there was a problem with the printer. <laughs> How crazy is that? <laughs> that is nuts. So I guess yeah. what happened... <laughs> there was a problem but with the printer. It was printing chance. inconsistent tones of gray and green color, and everyone liked the Hulk green better, right? So <laughs> after it printed it that way. Wow. And so it was a mistake. Yeah. Wow. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. Some of these are tougher. Um, okay. All right. As a service to fans, Stan Lee has made quick cameos in Marvel films. When did this start? Which was his first cameo? So it could have been 2005 Fantastic Four, 2000 X-Men, 2002 Spider-Man, or 2003 The Hulk. Uh, Fantastic Four. It was Spider-Man. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Let me... Uh, there got to be some easier questions on here, because I like... I like Marvel, too, and I don't know any of these. <laughs> this one I don't do. Let's see if you get this one here. All right. <laughs> Who am I? I'm one of Marvel's most per peculiar heroes. I'm an animal you will most likely find on a farm. <laughs> one of my weirdest foes has a bell for a head. You're not going to get this. There's no way. A bell? A bell for a head. A bell for a head? It's a duck. There's no way. I have no Howard idea. the Duck. How is is that even a Marvel thing? How Howard the Duck. Yeah, that's Marvel. Yeah, I a didn't bell know that. For Ed. He's, he's got. A, uh, he's a duck. <laughs> that, I can't. I don't get it. Um, uh. all right. Come on, we got to. All right, let's see here. Marvel Comics was originally known by what name? Do you know that one? Oh, that's not a multiple choice, is it? <laughs> I'll give you one choice, Timely Comics. No. <laughs> that was the name of it. Really? Yeah, did you know that? Oh, I didn't know that. Gosh. Uh. All right, well, Josh, can we edit all this out <laughs> and just give him right answers here? What, what did my producer get me into here? <laughs> right? 
<laughs> Make an enemy with your guests with these trivia right off the bat. <laughs> Never. We'll I'm loving it. Right <laughs> yes. Exactly right. Yeah, this is too tough. Um, <laughs> anyway, what what? Who's your favorite Marvel? Com I guess comic. Thor. Thor. Well, that's why. See, <laughs> I didn't have any Thor questions. <laughs> See. So why do you like Thor? What draws you to Thor? I like mythology. Yeah, huh? Yeah, so the the Norse mythology was not something that uh, in in school they talked more about Greek and Roman mythology. Yeah, it's you know? different, right? Yeah, it was really different. It's cool. You like even it. have a superhero name yourself, so La Bamba. <laughs> so how did that? How did that? How'd you get that nickname? Well, I, I kind of look like my son there, but I had a much deeper tan. Yeah. And uh, I had a short afro. Okay. Uh, and uh, I was in, I'm in this band called Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes. Okay. From uh, Asbury Park, New Jersey. Got it. And uh, not just the band members, but multiple people throughout the town have been given nicknames. Okay. <laughs> By Bruce or whoever you, you know. So uh, everybody in the band had a nickname. They, I joined the band. We had needed to find a nickname for this guy. And we were in the back of the Stone Pony. And a, a, a roadie by the name of uh, Gary Anderson okay. yelled out, La Bamba. And Bruce heard it and jumped up on the bar and Give me an L, give me an A, give me a B, and that's it. Is that right? That's <laughs> Bruce Springsteen jumping up on yeah. the bar. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Who has stories like that? You do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I kept it. That is awesome. So La Bamba, <laughs> what, that's who you were, right? That Everybody started yeah. calling you that then. Yeah. And it stuck. It stuck. Yeah. Did the kids call you La Bamba? No. <laughs> they call you dad, right? Yeah. Uh, some. Yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. Others rich, rich. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So, um, so you you've always been inclined to with music as a kid, or what? Have you? Yeah, pretty much. I grew up around in, in a musical family. So, yeah. how how did you kind of get into music? Like what? I what, started what piano at like seven. Okay. And um, then uh, I was gonna uh, in junior high school be in this choir that my sister who's old four years older than I she had already been through that experience and she hated this choir director and said you are not gonna you know uh -huh. forget that woman yeah and uh, I'm gonna introduce you to the instrumental director of the school you know, okay band director in which his name was mr. Evans okay is that to right? my son Evan see okay <laughs> he became uh, you know quite the uh, person that I looked up to interesting and uh, just uh, it was at the end of a year season so he was losing trombone players the following year because they were all graduating yeah there's a trombone take this home for the summer let's hear how you sound when you come back yeah so I was ready boom picked it yeah. up yeah and just kind of had a knack for it practice it yeah it, it's a fun instrument to play. Yeah, I got a funny story. So uh, when I was a, when I was a kid, I grew up in the East Coast as well. I grew up in New York, Long Island, and so it was like a big day, right? Where you know, if you want to be in the band, you get to choose your instrument. <clears throat> and a lot of my friends chose like the cool things, right? Like the drums and you know, trumpet. And so I I was sick that day, and so I couldn't choose any of the cool instruments. So the next day when I got to school, I'm like, can I pick my instrument? And they're like, no, the only thing left is the tuba. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't know what a tuba was. I'm like, okay, I'll play the tuba, right? And then you have to go to the local music store and go get your instrument. Was that how you had to do it too, right? You have to go rent no, it. Okay, actually. they gave it they to you. They had it there, yeah. Uh, so then they give me this big thing, <laughs> and I was a walker. <laughs> Oh. So I had to walk to school every day with the tube. It was the worst year oh, of my murder. life. Oh, it was the worst year. But <laughs> it was it was fun. So I was the tube player for about a, a good, what was it, maybe like fourth grade or something like that. Oh, so it's a fun experience. Yeah, yeah. It was it was cool. 
So do you, uh, how many um, trombones do you own now? I think uh, five. Five. Do you name them? Do they have names? No. <laughs> so we, I, uh, I keep one back east and yeah. I, when uh, you know, a student has another one. And, okay. And, and that's where you grew up. On, and you said New Jersey or was it Philadelphia? Yeah, New Jersey. You grew up in New Jersey. No, I grew up in Philly. Okay. But um, I keep it in New Jersey because I rarely play in Philly. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So. so when when so you you played I guess the trombone through all of middle school and then high school. Yeah. And then when did you kind of know that this is what you wanted to do with your life? I think by high school I was pretty. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you were playing in bands back then in high yeah. school. What was the first band you played in? Do you remember? It's called Nine Easy Pieces. Nine Easy Pieces. Yeah. It was a uh, Chicago, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, uh, you know, that kind of a horn band. Yeah. Huh? But we played all the unusual stuff. You know, back then on radio, they played, um, if it was like something like uh, WNEW or they would play like the B-sides okay. or anything else other than the hit. Yeah. It was on the, uh, that on was the being pushed at the time. You yeah. Know? So, uh, you know, that's what we enjoyed doing. Okay. And then, so how many years were you in that band before you got I mean, your next about, break, uh, I guess? Two years. Two years. Like that. Yeah. And then how did you end up hooking up with Bruce? How did that happen? <laughs> Well, I, I was, uh, I went on the road, I, I left school, I was in PMA, Okay. and I left that, and went on the road with a group called Vicky Allen and the Image, Okay. a Philly, Philadelphia-based group, Yep. and there was a trumpet player in that group, his name was Rick Gasta, okay. and he also was in Nine Easy Pieces, so uh, he went to a different high school, we didn't go to the same school. Uh, so after about a year and a half or so being on the road with Vicky Allen and the Image, we were up in Schenectady, New York, and had like a two-week engagement up there. I get a call from Rick. He says, hey, how about joining this guy, Bruce Springsteen? I had no idea. And he, Bruce was not famous at the time, was he? No. Not really, not, huh? No, he was playing like... Uh, like the bottom line or yeah. the main point where we are and okay. you know, stuff like that, you know. Um, he had his uh, two records. He had uh, the greetings out. That, okay. was, that was out. Um, so um, I, I got this, uh, I, I wrote this letter and I put it underneath the door of the, the leader who was a bit of an asshole. Hmm. Yeah, was we all have those in our <laughs> lives, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, he used to carry around a gun with him, and uh -huh. you know, sometimes his wife, vocalist, uh, she would walk in with, looking a little dark around the eye, you know. So anyhow, um, I put that underneath his door, and I took off for Asbury Park for the first time, and uh, I go to Rick's apartment. And he opens up the door, and the first thing he says to me, hey, you want to see my maggot farm? Okay. Because <laughs> he's that kind of, he's a really weird guy. It sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> Great guy. I love him. I still love him. It's really almost weird. as embarrassing as saying, hey, we're going to do like trivia about Marvel <laughs> Comics, right? The first time you meet somebody. Yeah. yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> with the hardest Marvel comic questions known to man. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, okay, so you got yeah. to see his maggots. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah that, that was the, basically the start of it. The, the first rehearsal, uh, the audition, and there was nobody else at the audition. It was just me. Interesting. Um, just uh, at, on the dance floor of the Stone Pony. Wasn't even up on the stage. Just, and Bruce was there, and little Steven, and mm. Southside. And I didn't know who was who at the time. I, these were all icons now, right? Yeah, you know, uh -huh. yeah. I didn't really know much about it at all. Sure, but it worked and it stuck. And uh, 
you know, on and off with the Jukes for all these all these years. I'm still in, in touch with Johnny. We still do some things. I played with him last week. Is that right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, he, he's a great guy. Yeah. He's a lot of fun. That's, that's so cool. Um, so how many, I guess, how many years did, did you go on tour then with Johnny yeah. and Bruce? And that was kind of your job then, huh? Yeah. Uh, I joined that band in 76. Okay. And uh, left in 81 because uh, uh, we did a show in New York and Diana Ross was in the audience. Okay. Uh, and, uh, our road manager came down to us after the show and said, you know, Diana Ross likes the horn section. You're doing these steps. You're doing what night you want to go out on the road with Diana Ross. There wasn't a question. You were going to go on the road. Diana gets yeah. what she wants. Right? Yeah. Right. Right. And again, no audition. <laughs> you know, no like, audition. No. Right. The yes. only audition I think I had two auditions. I think in my life was, um, one to get into school. Yep. And um, the, the other one for Joe Jackson. Okay. When he put out that. Da, 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 yeah. Da, uh -huh. da, 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 you know. And um, there was a long line of trombone players for that. <laughs> yeah, I bet there was. And he gave me a call and he said, yeah, I really liked the way you played. There was, there was a guy who came in after you who was like, you know, uh, a monster or like technician guy you know mm -hmm. but uh if we were going to take a trombone we'd take you but we decided not to take a trombone <laughs> ah interesting <laughs> yeah but that's it for for my lifetime of just having two trombone auditions that's that's amazing <laughs> yeah. right yeah yeah um so you you toured then with uh with diana for a couple years yeah two years yeah and then what happened after that i went with little steven okay he was starting up a band called the uh, little steven and the disciples of soul mm. okay yeah and uh we did that tour and that record and um and then things got expensive so he had to let the horn section go. Oh, I see. And I just hung around uh, Jersey Shore playing bars with my own band called La Bamba and the Hubcaps. Okay, I like it. Yeah, that yeah, was it. And now were you married at the time? Kids yet? No. No, not yet. No. Didn't get married till 87. So how did the love of your life enter your world then? She saw us at a uh, Little Steven show. Where was that at? Big Man's West in Red Bank. Where's that? It, it's uh, what state is it's it? It's right next in New Jersey. It's in New Jersey, okay. Uh, Red Bank, New Jersey. Um, little club next to a theater that they now call the Count Basie Theater. Okay. Uh, so you're up there doing your thing, looking yeah. good. Yeah. You know, and she's uh, seen you. Yep. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> that wasn't it. There's a lot more to the story. <laughs> nah, she wouldn't want me to talk about that. <laughs> so, like, that is awesome. <laughs> so you guys started dating. You next thing you know, how yeah. many years later you get married? Yeah, eighty-seven, and then uh, you know this guy right here, Evans, the firstborn. Yeah, is that right? Eighty-nine. Okay. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah, we were, uh, he was conceived in Ireland. Is, <laughs> did you know that, Evan? <laughs> I'm sure you've heard that story. <laughs> Not the details of it. <laughs> I was with Bruce at the time. We were doing the Tunnel of Love tour. Okay. And that's where, yeah. Oh, got it. And then uh, my wife, Sue, she was also involved with the tour. She was uh, in a little dance routine with the wives and girlfriends that Bruce would bring out. Huh. For one song. Really? Yeah. That's cool. So she actually traveled with you guys. Yeah. yeah. That's neat. Yeah. Huh. And uh, I've heard you played for a president, too. For what? Uh, you played for a president. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So tell me that story. Yeah. Well, it, it was with um, being with the Max Weinberg 7. Okay. And Bill Clinton. Wow. You know. And he's a, is he a Trump? clarinet player saxophone saxophone that's right he's a saxophone player yeah yeah 
I just been recently watching the impeachment uh, series. Oh yeah, on the right. Uh huh. That's pretty wild. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it's it's something. But how was it to play in front of a president? Did you say it's well, one of the highlights of your career, or what? Well, no. Later, um, that was that was actually the first time. Okay. Um, but I played at the White House with my band, La Bamba and the Hubcaps. Wow. And backed up all these other artists um, as like a backup band. Interesting. It was a fundraiser, uh, Special Olympics thing, uh, Christmas show. And the Clintons used to, I, I'm not sure if it was just the Clintons that, that used to do this all the time or if, other presidents or, in the past. I, I don't know. I but, see. You know, it was like a yearly thing for them to do. And John Bon Jovi asked me to do it because down the shore again, the yeah. shore connection. Uh huh. And uh, uh, so there was a whole bunch of great artists on it. Eric Clapton. Um, wow. Uh, what, Run DMC. Okay. Uh, John Popper. Yep. You know, it was a lot of fun. So uh, I see here uh, that you've worked with Bruce, obviously, Bon Jovi, right? Another Jersey boy, Diana Ross. Uh, Frank Sinatra? Did this accidentally get on this paper, or did you actually work with Frank, too? No, I didn't. That's accidentally. He was standing on the stage when... <laughs> We were playing with Diana Ross. Uh, and so there was a fundraiser show with Diana and Frank and Pavarotti. Wow. Talk so about he came out icons. on the stage while we were playing. and Oh, boy. <laughs> well, you <laughs> Don't make any mistakes now. Were you inspired by like that Count Basie and Frank Sinatra and oh, the yeah. Glenn Miller band? Like, is that what you were inspired by as a kid? Oh, yeah. Up? Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All the big band. My uh, my grandfather, uh, he recently passed. He was 94 years old. And so I grew up listening to that because he kind of raised me. So I listened uh -huh. to all of that stuff. His favorite was Vic Damone. Oh, really? Yeah, that was his favorite. Yeah. Wow. But, yeah, uh, I love that stuff. I, I grew up the same way, listening to my parents. And, uh -huh. You know, but my stepfather had a... Uh, he really enjoyed... Um, Jazz, modern jazz. Okay. So when I brought home the trombone, he said, well, you go out and get yourself a bunch of J.J. Johnson records. And, you know, mm -hmm. that's who you want to be listening to. And he was right. It was mm. great. So you just would kind of just jam out at home as a kid? Yeah. 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 Interesting. Some great music. I, you know, that's why, like, today they don't really make music like that like i love michael buble because when he shows up he brings a whole orchestra with him right yeah. and there's not a lot of artists that do that anymore hmm. right harry connick maybe yeah i guess so yeah. yeah it just makes it makes the uh the the song it's i don't know does I, he I'm, still have a tv I'm show i'm a big fan harry connick i think he might yeah. maybe I'm not sure. We'll have to look into that. So now we're going to fast forward, I guess, to, to Conan O'Brien, yeah. right? It's kind of what made you famous. Mm. Maybe. <laughs> 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 I was watching clips before you got here. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. I asked some, how, how long were you on that show for? 25 years. Wow. 25 years yeah, with yeah. Conan. Yeah. Huh. I was on the road with Southside. We were in Europe, and I got a call from Max, and... We got this uh, thing to audition for. You might be interested in this. And yep. I didn't have to leave the tour. Just worked out perfect. And we got back and rehearsed a couple of days. And next thing, Conan and Jeff Ross are walking in the door. You know, you know Conan personally or, or Jeff Ross? I don't, no. Uh. So Jeff Ross, uh, he was uh, our road manager for Diana Ross. Okay. So to, to see him... Walk in the door was. Wow, you got your in what a here. Shoe in. 
<laughs> I mean, e even if things go uh, array, <laughs> yeah, you know, astray. Uh -huh. It was just like, uh, wow, you know, right? So, yeah. so, so it sounds like you're already in, right? And w were you living in the East Coast at the time, or you were in L.A.? We we're living in Jersey. You're in Jersey, okay. Living in, in West Orange, and then, uh, and then we soon moved to Randolph, New Jersey. Okay. And them. Yep. They went to Randolph schools. Okay. And uh, and. Many, many uh, adventure. <laughs> it was, it was great. Uh, the whole run. So Conan filmed in New York then. Yeah. Ah, I at got the it. Uh, Rockefeller Center. Yep. And uh, there was one time I, where I was in a car accident with my daughter. She was learning how to drive. I had a little. Yeah. Accident, and then, eventually. I wanted to come back into work, and, and Evans, you know, he was going to drive me in. And then he spoke to you know, some of the producers on the, sh on the show, and he said, hey, well, you're here anyhow. You're driving your dad in. What do you want to do? Right? Yeah. That was uh, uh, Dan, Dan Ferguson. Right? Okay. Yeah. So it, that all really worked out quite well, and that's how... Evan got involved with, uh, you know, pushing himself more into the film and TV, huh. you know, mind, you know, getting his life rolling. Got it. You know? Dad opened up the door, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Um, so so 25 years on, uh, on Conan, um, so did you stop touring then? You just kind of had to be there, I'd imagine, like every day, right? No, there were vacation times I see. during the show. So I was still able to stay with Johnny ah, and do some work. This whole time, okay. Eventually that came to a stop. But yeah, for, it was a number of years of still doing both. So on Conan, you got, you got to jam out with probably so many guests. Yeah. What are some like that come to mind? Like some of the memories that come to mind? Yeah. Um, well, Isaac Hayes. Okay. That was really great. That was uh, he had a big band on there, so there was four trumpets, four trombones, five saxes, and I was sitting on the the end of the uh, of my row, right in back of him, and that was really cool. Yeah. Great experience. Huh. He changed the words from Shaft to Conan. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Conan, can you dig it? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Um, yeah, there, there, were, there were just so many artists. It's like a blur yeah, at this huh? point. But wow. we, got to, we got to play with a lot of them. And people also just coming up and playing with the band, playing with us. Sure. You know? Yeah. Different artists and whatnot. Uh, Ted Nugent came up a couple of times. Okay. <laughs> cool. It was a, yeah, he's a crazy guy. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ever get nervous? Yeah. You do? Yeah. I bet, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of pressure. Sure. Right? Yeah. Kind of being up there on the stage with everybody in the world watching, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. it's, it's exciting. For some reason, I ended up being the, the fall guy for his, uh, his jokes. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, it, it came up kind of early, like in the first uh, couple of weeks of the show. They wrote a sketch called In the Year 2000. Okay. And uh, I'd have to have a whole, whole day flashlight under my chin, and the lights went out, and there would be numerous cameras you know, going by. As I sing, in the year 2000. <laughs> you know? I um, remember that bit. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. So that went on for quite a time. That's one of the oldest bits in the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it went on through the whole time of being in New York. And when we came out here to The Tonight Show. Yeah. And oh, so you worked the, at... You worked in the Tonight Show out here too, then, huh? Yeah. Okay. So that was the year three thousand. <laughs> 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 
And then there was a, a tour that followed after we, um, after the uh, Tonight Show came to a halt. There was a tour that was put together. Okay. Um, and uh, we tried doing the year 2000 on that, but the whole thing with that is you need the cameras. Sure, you do. So it, it, Just it didn't quite the same. work. Even though they had the two screens up on the side of the stage, uh -huh. it still <laughs> they couldn't get it going. So you were in you were in, living in L.A. doing the Tonight Show, and then what happened then? So then Jay Leno came back and said, "I want my show back." What's the story there? <laughs> Well, that that's kind of that's history, right? That's <laughs> already yeah, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. That that was that, that was a, that was a bummer. That was a that was a difficult time. It sure was, right? Yeah. So um, we had already uh, rented a, a home uh, with the budget in mind, what the Tonight Show would be. Sure. And then uh, when that went uh, bye bye. We were, uh, you know, biting our fingernails. What's going to happen? Sure. <laughs> but we managed to stay in a stay home. We're still Is that there. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Where's the home? Calabasas. Okay. Yeah. We uh, we looked for the best school system we could find when we before we moved out here, and we kind of liked that one. So yeah, we had. You know, three more kids coming up through the public school system. Yeah. And this year is the first uh, is the first year that uh, our son, our youngest son, he's now in UCLA. Okay. Majoring in music, and we have no more kids in the public school system. Wow. So this is a this was a big deal for us this year. This year, empty nesters. Not exactly empty. <laughs> but <laughs> exactly empty. <laughs> Our number number four child is still living home. Okay, she's a music major at CSUN. Okay, yeah, you know, but she, yeah, we still have one there. So you've been married twenty years. Congratulations, by the way. Married? Been, is that right? Married over twenty? Thirty-four years. Okay, well, married over twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna hates me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You've been married 34 years. Okay. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> um, five very talented children. Right. So what's the secret? Uh, give and take. That's a good secret. That's a secret. Yeah. With the kids and the wife, probably. Right? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I tried dividing them up early in. Want to take Evan down to the park. Mm -hmm. uh, remember to take Jade with you. Uh, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> so how old are all the kids then? Well, uh, Evan's 32 and yeah. Jade, she's living in New York. And she's uh, 30. She just turned 30 okay. recently. And Justin... Just turned 25. He's living in Seattle. He just moved there okay. on a whim. <laughs> it was a wild decision. But uh, he went to a Mariners baseball game and uh, came back the same night. And a couple of days later, we find out, hey, I got a job with the Mariners. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's how life works sometimes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So Which position does he play? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be beautiful? He, he, he's always wanted to be involved with sports in, in some way. So sports management is where, okay. you know, he got, where he would eventually like to be, you know. Uh, so, uh, and then we have Samantha, who, who's 21 now. Okay. And Reed, R-E-E-D. And uh, that kind of shows my Marvel comic. Uh, I like it. <laughs> influence See? there because of Reed Richards. Ah, uh, got Fantastic it. Fantastic Four, yeah. <laughs> so if all of your kids were here right now, um, how would they describe you? How Mental? <laughs> <laughs> Be 
Yeah, he's shaking his head. He's shaking, yeah, Evan's back there shaking he's his head. He's agreeing with that. Yeah. <laughs> mental. It may be mental in all the good reasons. <laughs> <laughs> So and everybody's kind of musically inclined. Yeah, the whole family. So what what does Evan and Jade and Justin like? What what instruments do they all play? Evan started on drums. Okay, and then uh, he went to trumpet. Okay, and then um, Jade started on flute, and then she went to theater. Okay, and then uh, Justin started on drums and he's taught himself guitar and bass huh. some piano now and he also on his spare time uh composes house music okay yeah. which i didn't know what that was until, <laughs> until he started doing it it's kind of a big deal right it's a big <laughs> it's thing it's a big deal it is a big deal it yeah is. uh-huh it is um uh, and then samantha she she started on voice she was she was singing and she stayed on voice she's a um, she was in the opera at csun last week okay and yeah. my mom used to sing opera so every time i see the kids you know doing you know stuff it's it's, it's in the blood yeah, yeah yeah it sounds like it yeah it's an emotional thing <laughs> huh i stay in the back of the auditorium I don't get too close to the front. <laughs> yeah, not anymore, right? <laughs> so out of the family, uh, who who likes the spotlight the most? Uh, I think Evan. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. he's um, the master of ceremonies. Okay. 24-7. Good. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Thumbs up from Evan. Why not? So I saw that your family did something during quarantine. I guess on Instagram, you got something called Sunsets with La Bamba. Yeah. What's that about? Well, it was an idea that Evan came up with. Okay. Uh, Conan had just uh, ended. Let's have a family meeting. How are we going to uh, get through this? You know, uh, let's come up with some ideas. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, all of a sudden, uh, there was a whole crew, 20 people or so of people at our house, and uh, some scripts that have been put together called Sunsets with La Bamba. Okay. <laughs> and it was this, the strangest thing for me. After being with Conan all that time, and then here in our backyard, <laughs> you know, yeah, it was like going in a in a ride with uh, my youngest son, giving him a a a, 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 a lesson. Okay, you know, uh, teach him how to drive, and they're in the back seat of the car and they're filming and you know do this and do that, and then we had a wrestler come over at the uh, the house because I. I kind of watch wrestling, okay. and WWF kind of old school guy. Got it. I've got wrestling trivia coming up next year. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 You're going to get a whole lot of <laughs> on that. <laughs> uh, but that was fun. You know, um, his, the guy who he had over was uh, his brother is, uh, was actually had, had, had made – it made it pretty good on the uh, on WWF. Okay, you know, hmm. but uh, that was fun. And Evan got thrown in a pool. Is that he right? He picked him up, and he was. Oh, the wrestler did really. Yeah. Wow. He's going to do it to me, but they, Evan says eh, maybe we shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> it's like our insurance policies first here, right? <laughs> Smart man. So, uh, so I guess there's a. Uh, short and sweet musical intro to your show and i hear that you've got some instruments here oh yeah okay. so i'd love i'd love yeah. it if you would do us the honor <laughs> <laughs> i 
Is that it? That's it. Oh, I love it. That's it. Well, you got to give me some more. Play some more. <laughs> so good <laughs> so good thank you so much wow you might have to. so that was awesome thank you for doing that and for bringing My that pleasure. all the way down here um one thing i noticed about you when you first walked in is your uh, they call it a panama hat yeah so has that been your signature look and it has. for how long uh, since i joined Southside. yeah huh i've changed the style a little bit okay i used to wear just a uh a, a fedora panama but this is a gambler and i've been wearing these now for well probably uh for m most of the time of conan i guess yeah uh, there was a a, a a guy who became a very good friend of mine now is and uh tony lippy in um the panama hat shop in saint augustine okay uh-huh and uh he sent me these hats and he hasn't never charged me for a hat and i've got like 50 or 60 of these different <laughs> colors but so cool them. How did that all start? Did you just kind of take a hat from the house and put it on and that thing you know that's kind of your no. signature look or no, it wasn't. When I when I joined Southside, uh, we were taken around for some clothing by this woman who lived in Bruce's house. Okay, she was a cook and uh, became like his valet. Her name was Obi. Hmm. And uh, she took us out shopping for clothes for the Jukes. For a couple of Bruce tours, whatnot, you know. Yeah. S strange, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. So we put the hat on, and that's it. It's just I used to throw some hats out to the audience occasionally, and you know, that's, whatnot. That's cool. I've never wore a, a Panama hat. I need. I'm going to Panama actually. Oh. Yes, I'm oh, going there in February for the first time. Oh, wow. So well, you got to come back with a hat. I'm going to definitely come back <laughs> with a hat. Yes, we'll take a selfie together when we'll have lunch and we'll, uh, we'll have our hats on. So Yeah. I would love that. <laughs> so, so working with, uh, like, Bruce Springsteen has so many loyal fans, right? I mean, diehard fans. Yeah. Um, what's, uh, what's something that, you know, uh, that people might not know about Bruce? Something interesting about Bruce, since you've known him for all these years. Uh, he's a humble guy, right? Yeah, he's very humble. That's what I thought. He's very, he, he's a great guy. Mm -hmm. Very humble. Um, any fun stories? We, we used to have a lot of great times together. We used to actually hang out together. Yeah. Huh? We had a. He had a softball softball team that we would uh, we would play different uh, radio stations. Okay. You know. Um, Does he like have we, like a weird food thing? He orders his chicken a certain way. What's his on drink? the stage? Yeah, like what's what's some interesting about Bruce that most people don't talk about, like on normal interviews. Hmm. Uh. Trying to think I don't what think he there can was really share, anything right? to nothing. To, no. I mean, um, I guess depending upon what, since I wasn't on all the tours, mm -hmm. it's a lot of the tours are pretty much the same. Um, and with Diana, also, mm -hmm. actually, as far as between, uh, any band that I've been with who who is completely different sure from the beginning to end is Southside Johnny is that right you never know what's what you're gonna get huh. he'll write out a list and then he'll just go from it it's just Interesting. you know pull up anything you know but um Bruce's shows were uh, very well put together yeah you know um there were routines all the time. Um, 
and the same thing uh, w with Diana. Yeah, huh? Um, but um, there were some incredible moments with Bruce, uh, like um, the, the Super Bowl. Ooh. Yeah. Played wow. the Super Bowl. Was that him. a pinch me moment for you or what? Yeah, that, that was, um, was, yeah. Uh, well, it kind of, it all started out getting the call for, to, to do the Super Bowl. Yeah. And um, I walk into rehearsal and I was uh, still ailing from that leg that I had the accident with, with Jade. So sure. I was on a cane. So he's, uh oh, what do we got going on here? Because he had something planned. Don't know if the cane is actually going to work. Oh, okay. you know. Uh -huh. uh, but it all involved that he wanted to create a, a wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Purposely. Yeah. You know. <laughs> 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 so this yeah. is after the Janet Jackson, probably. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, A couple yeah, years yeah, after. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So um, he tells me, uh, well, LaBamba, what you're going to do is you're going to have a tear-off suit. And Mark Pender, the trumpet player who's standing next to me, he's going to tear your suit off, and you're going to just be in a, a garter from your socks <laughs> to your um, boxer shorts. Okay. <laughs> And a uh, guinea tea. <laughs> and you, this is, yeah, we're going to try to make this happen. And uh, obviously NBC and uh, NFL probably <laughs> said no that way. Is not gonna <laughs> that is not going to happen. Right. Well, it sounds like you got a good sense of humor then. For oh, he sure. does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he does. There, there it is. <laughs> so cool. I, like I said, if, if you wrote a book with all the stories that you probably have, I'd love to read it. So, yeah. 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 Few people have told me that. Mm hmm. <laughs> well, maybe, Evan, you can help dad make that happen. <laughs> He's saying no. Because <laughs> he, <laughs> he'd be in some of he these stories, right? <laughs> well, we're going to wrap up with uh, a segment that we call Hennessy Heart to Heart. This is easy. There's no trivia here. There's no gotchas. It's just questions. And the first thing that comes to mind, just kind of rattle it off. So the first question is, what makes you laugh the most? Uh, I think my kids. Okay. What did you want to be when you were a kid? A musician. You always knew that. Yeah, I think I always knew that. Okay. What's your biggest fear? My biggest fear is dropping my trombone slide, which I've done a few times. <laughs> <laughs> and I did it on a Bruce show, too. Oh, wow. Yeah. I used to uh, come out front with Bruce and do a little dance. And there's a lock on the horn. Mm-hmm. Right here. Yep. And I, I, would lock, I would lock that up and hand him the, uh, the horn. Yep. And he'd hold it. And I do this little dance, whatnot, after I take a trombone solo. <laughs> Love the dance. <laughs> and he gives me back the horn, and there was the whole um, stage was covered in plush white rug. Okay. Right. So I go back, way back to where the horn section is standing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gary Talent, the bass player, comes up to me, and he says, <laughs> Does this belong to you? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So well, I guess that's like my biggest fear. Yes. <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> uh, great story. Here's the next question. What is your go-to karaoke song? Well, I only do karaoke with Evan. Okay. <laughs> you know, and that, that would be Elvis's uh, um, Love Keeps Lifting Me Higher. Burning Love. 
Burn in Love. Burn in Love. Yes. Okay. God, that's yeah. a great karaoke song. That it gets really is. People and into it's it. It's fun to do it with Evan, especially. Uh huh. Especially after he has a couple. Speaking of Evan, this is probably an <laughs> Evan question, but I'm going to let you answer it. What makes you really angry? Angry? Yeah, what makes you angry? What makes me really, really angry? <laughs> Uh, something the the, uh, the kids no no. Uh, you already use the kids. They make you laugh. They can't make you angry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Can, what what things are you? Uh, 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 hmm. <laughs> That's a very difficult question. <laughs> Now the suspense. I think Evan ready to see who wants to know. Politics? Okay. <laughs> That's a good answer. That's a good answer. I like it. I thought that wasn't a trick question. No, it wasn't. <laughs> there was something I didn't know about. No, okay. All no. right. There it is. <laughs> There it is. It makes a lot of people angry. So you love wrestling. If you had a WWE or WWF wrestler name, what would it be? La Bamba. La Bamba. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Easy. I don't have to think about that. What's the movie that you've seen most in your life? It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, what a great movie. Yeah. yeah. Every every holiday. It's yeah. So You have to watch it, right? Yeah. Just one of those. Yeah. What's the most spontaneous thing that you've ever done? When we were on our honeymoon, we went to uh, Puerto Vallarta. Okay. And my wife doesn't, uh, she, she doesn't like um, being on the water much, but we, we got in a little boat to a, um, uh, a, a private island. Okay. And I saw some people, um, they were, you know, going up in the air with the, um, what, are, what are they like called? Like hot air balloons? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Not, not hot no, the... Uh, oh, I know, you're parasailing. Parasailing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. And I saw that, and I just jumped off the boat, swam to shore, got in, and took off. Uh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't know what was in me at the time to, huh. you know, but uh, it was scary as all hell. Um, once I got up there, uh, everything was, the boat was like this small. Yeah. And there were cliffs along the side. So we were coming back and I pull on the, on this thing when you get, you know, mm -hmm. and I was pulling f as hard as I could. And I was, thought for sure I was going to hit the side of that sure. wall. It all worked out. Wow. But that's pretty spontaneous. That's like waking up one morning, and you know, jumping out of an airplane or something like. He know? did that. Are you serious? Evan did that. Just <laughs> wake up and no plans, and next thing you know, you're doing it. Like that's insane. I don't know about the no plans, but that, wow. But, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Where is your favorite place in the world to visit? Uh, well, we 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 toured around a lot. Um, Europe, Scandinavia. Uh, I think I I love. I think I really enjoy Scandinavia the most. Of interesting, all the other. been there. It might be that that Nordic uh, Thor mm -hmm. thing, the Viking Museum, the whole you know that whole thing. Yeah. What snack can you just not get enough of? What's your go-to snack? My go-to snack. Is uh, well, I don't eat them anymore, but it was crimpets, okay? <laughs> yeah, butterscotch crimpets, sure, you know. Uh -huh. uh, that was a Philadelphia thing, tasty cake. Oh, sure, yeah. There's a couple places in town here that actually have cheesesteak, Philly cheesesteak places, mm -hmm. and they bring in the Jersey Mike's was one of them. I don't know if they still have it, but that was a place that had the tasty cakes. Oh, yeah. Cakes. I never, actually, I've never been to Jersey Mike's. Yeah. Yeah. If you want some tasty cakes, I think they have them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. See? <laughs> there you go. Okay. What's the best practical joke you've ever pulled off? 
that I pulled off? Yeah. I don't pull off any practical jokes. You don't. I get you're practical the, you're jokes. You're the butt of the jokes. I huh? am the butt of the jokes. <laughs> Let's underline butt of the jokes. <laughs> Every time. I don't know why, but you know, Conan always did this. And uh, so the like guys Bruce, in the Bruce band. Bruce was trying to do it to you for the Bruce, Super Bowl, right? You know, I don't. <laughs> he's just like but um one time we tried to reenact a uh, one of those instances in uh on sunsets with la bamba okay and evan dressed up like me and i dressed up like our saxophonist jerry vivino uh-huh i had um i was called in for jury duty one day and i said i'm, I'm gonna be late for show i won't be able to make rehearsal i ended up not having jury duty that day okay. <laughs> he said come back tomorrow you know you know uh so when i got to work i uh, walked into my dressing room and a policeman comes behind me and starts reading me my rights and you you're supposed to be in jury today you're not in jury huh. um so we're gonna have to take you down handcuffed me took me to the elevators and then i'm in tears <laughs> oh, my oh my god oh my god what's going on here? sure and then jerry comes running over and says all right he's had enough he's oh had my enough. god <laughs> that gave me post-traumatic stress right yeah oh my. yeah uh-huh it was ongoing yeah almost daily that i would be something you know um i was I was driving into the show and I get a call from Kona's producer saying, we're going to dress you up today as the uh, naked, um, the naked cowboy. <laughs> He's a character who stands on the, uh, in New York, Times Square. Yeah. And uh, he just stands there in his underwear and a cowboy hat and boots and, and strums. And I said, uh, well, <clears throat> that's a little embarrassing, but uh, look, you have nothing to worry about. The curtain's going to open up and you you're, you're going to be like to the front of the you know standing in front uh -huh. nobody's going to see anything you know else you're gonna have the guitar over your <laughs> thing there so you know i said okay all right whatever we go in i rehearse it the curtain opens up i do the thing whatnot uh -huh. and right before the show the producer comes down to me and segment producer says uh, La Bamba, we kind of changed this up, and we think it might be better if you start at the top of the stairs where the audience is. <laughs> <laughs> right before the show. Yeah, right before the show. Uh. <laughs> so I go up to the, around the way, and the show's starting, and, I'm the, and, and I see my friend James there on camera, and I say, what are you doing right there? At, at that position i mean i'm walking down the stairs right here and uh, what, what are you, <laughs> why are you up here you know i mean the cameras are down there he said, Papa, don't worry about it man just just do your thing and then all of a sudden it started and i'm like walking down the, the stairs with the guitar and ho trying to hold it together where nobody's seeing anything <laughs> and i get to the bottom of the stairs and um and that that's all i got that's it i'm, I'm going i try to walk out the doors and they're holding the doors shut they're out <laughs> on you're the other in. side they're on the other side of the door and they won't let me pass through those freaking doors and i'm like hey oh pushing the door hey, oh oh and all the time the James, the camera guy, had the camera. Oh my God! But uh, <laughs> you know? oh man! Oh, wow, that's a practical joke. That is a that sure is a practical <laughs> joke. <laughs> well, there's got to be YouTube footage of that oh, somewhere. There is. I got to go back and watch that <laughs> yeah. for sure. It's so funny. What smell do you really enjoy? What what? What smell do you really enjoy? Like, what's a good scent? What smell? Yeah. Oh. Meat. You. Okay. That's a good answer. Meat. Yeah. <laughs> meat? Meat. I they said meat. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> That's a better answer. That's a better answer. <laughs> I love the smell of me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, uh, all right, no, meat. meat, man. You like, know, a, like a like smoked meat, like cooked yeah, meat. Oh, bacon, I love that too. Uh, yeah, and, uh, man, ribs and the best. steaks, just oh man, yeah, so good. <laughs> uh, let's see here, uh, a couple more. What are you most grateful for? What are you most grateful for? Great, most grateful for uh, my wife and children. Sure, that's absolutely yeah. And then the last one here, what does music mean to you? Uh, it's, it's, it's my life. It's my venture. It's my journey. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it means uh, everything to me. It's, it's, it means, you know, watching my kids grow up through it mm -hmm. and having them have a much wider scope of music than myself and being proud of that and enjoying that. Love it. And you know, I know you have a uh, an album, uh, yeah. like a new album coming out. Is that right? Is it out already? Well, it, it's out. It, it came out during the uh, the spring. It's actually a uh, a, uh, a a remix, okay, of a, uh, and it's called um, Grapefruit Moon: The Songs of Tom Waits, okay, and uh, it's with Southside Johnny, okay, singing all the songs and with my. 20 plus piece big band. Wow. What's the name of the album? Grapefruit Moon. Grapefruit Moon. Okay. The songs of Tom Waits. Awesome. And yeah. where can we get it? Uh, online or it's all over. It wherever is. you would normally get. Okay. You can pick it up. Well, uh, Richie La Bamba Rosenberg, I really appreciate you coming here to Hennessy Studios and sitting with us. I'd love it if you take us out with some music. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay. I would All love right. that. I would be honored. All right. <laughs> Wow, so good, so good. That was just awesome. I am I love it. <laughs> I'm honored. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an honor for me.